Hello and welcome. My name is Matthew Marquit, and this is part one of the basic Unity level creation tutorial series. Uh, in this series, I'm going to assume that you know literally nothing about the program, and so we're going to talk from a uh, beginner's view. Um, on the side here, we can see the things that I want to cover in this particular video. And so the first thing we're going to do is I'm actually going to start by opening up Unity by clicking on the icon down here. Now, our dialog box pops open here. And one of the things I like about the new Unity is it does kind of uh, keep popping open with all of these uh, cool little uh, hotkeys to talk about how you can do uh, some stuff. You can shut it off or whatever. But So we start off with our projects folder. You can create a new project by clicking this button or you can create a new project by clicking this button. If you do already or have already created a new project, you'll see the projects listed here and this button will be gone. However, obviously, as I already mentioned, you can then click on this. Um, this over here, actually, if you have have a login or account with Unity. This is kind of how you can sign in and do that stuff. But what we're going to do is we're going to hit New Project. Okay, and we can start off by seeing uh, the options that we have, which is the name. And in this case, the default name is always going to be New Unity Project. If you already got one called that, it'll be New Project 1, 2, 3, and so on. But we're just going to call this one Basic Level. So we'll type that in there. Now the location is where it's saving this entire project. Um, and you can choose, you can see right here that I have uh, already chosen a different place to put my Unity um, uh, uh, projects. And uh, you can click on these little buttons right here and find a folder anywhere on your computer and use that folder instead of the default one. Now we also see a 2D and 3D option. Um, we're going to do um, a 3D map in this case, so we're going to leave it on 3D, but the major differences between the two is basically just the camera and the skybox. Um, if we choose 3D, we're going to get a 3D camera and a skybox. If we choose 2D, we will get a 2D orthographic camera and no skybox. That's pretty much the main difference, and it will always default to those cameras automatically. So it is kind of annoying, of course, if we hit the wrong one, but we're not completely stuck even if we do make a mistake. Now we also see down here that there is the asset packages uh, button. When we click on this, these are actually all of the... Um, packages that come stock with the uh, free version of Unity. And these are all different things from uh, cameras, character controllers, particles, of, and all sorts of other things. In this case, for what we're going to do, we're going to choose characters to get our character controllers that we're going to need later. And we're going to choose environment to get a couple of environment assets that we can use uh, in our basic level. Once we're done with that, we're going to hit done, and then we're going to create the project. Now we're going to wait for a little bit. It takes a little bit of time as it decompresses or basically unzips all of these packages and puts them onto your computer in your chosen location. However, don't freak out, of course, if you miss any of the assets or you chose the wrong one. You're like, oh, I want to add these assets later. Once Unity actually loads, you can go to the Assets drop-down and choose Import Package, and you'll actually find all of those same packages there. Um, so you can do it manually. Uh, after the fact. So we're waiting just a little bit more. It's telling us to hold on down here. And obviously if we've chosen 20 different packages in there, we just clicked all of them just for fun, it would take that much longer uh, to start Unity for the first time. So this is basically, like I said, just unzipping all of those assets and placing them into the file structure uh, that we have chosen. So it should be a couple more seconds. Looks like we're almost done. There we go. All right, so I'm going to minimize this for a second so we can take a look at the overall view of the default look that we see uh, in Unity. Now, this is also the default viewport layout. I tend to like it a little bit different. I'm actually going to go up here to Window, and I'm going to go to Layouts, and this is how we change our layouts. My particular choice is Tall. So we're going to choose tall right here. Um, and then I kind of smush these windows. Keep in mind that any of these windows can be moved uh, or whatever, but I don't need all this extra space. So I'm going to smush this window in a little bit and then pull this window in a little bit. And this gives me a lot more real estate to work with in my viewport. Now, if we go back to my little uh, outline here, we talked about that. Now I want to talk about the scene view and a whole bunch of little things within the scene view. Okay, now the first thing I want to mention is your shaded versus your wireframe. You can choose that by clicking on this right here and picking one of these options. Now there's nothing really in the scene uh, to see uh, actually be shaded or to be set to wireframe, but just know those options are there. 
Now, as I said before, remember you can have a 2D or 3D camera. If you have a 2D camera, it looks like this. If we click on that, with that being uh, highlighted, if it's 2D, if we click off of it, it will then be 3D. That's how we can uh, change those cameras. Now, the next one here is your lighting. So when you click on this, if you have a scene lighting, in this case, because there's really nothing in the scene, once again, it's kind of hard to tell, but you can basically turn your lighting off and on when it's highlighted. Uh, the last one I want to talk about is the skybox. If we actually rotate our camera here, we can take a look and see that this skybox, when we select off of it, will disappear and it will turn back on. This is a procedurally generated skybox that is controlled by our directional light here, but we're actually going to talk about that a little bit more later. Now, the next thing I want to talk about is our little widget or gizmo uh, over here. Uh, and so this particular um, widget allows us to choose different views. So if we want to pick a view right here, like a right view, we can click on that. And it'll rotate the camera to be a right view. However, keep in mind that you want to take a look at the little icon in front of whatever view we're choosing. This one has converging lines, which means it's a perspective view on the right side. If we actually click it again, it will have parallel lines. We'll notice our viewport kind of changes the way it looks. Now we're in a perfect side view or an orthographic or isometric view that has no perspective at all. If we click on it again, of course, we'll get perspective. We can see these lines converging from a distance and perspective. So you can choose any of these, right? And it will go to them. But sometimes I, I'm not sure which one I'm choosing when I'm clicking here. The easiest thing to do then is just to right click and go front or left or whatever you want but always be mindful of whether they are converging lines or parallel lines so that you know if you're in a perfect orthographic view or a perspective view. So if we just click back in the middle here, we'll always go back to perspective and this is what we want. We can always rotate the camera after the fact, which does lead me into the next thing I want to talk about is how we move around in the viewport. Now this one's pretty simple. As a gamer, it's very intuitive. There are other ways to move around, um, but my favorite is just to right click and then hit WASD. W to move forward, S to move backwards, A to go left, and D to go right. Um, so that's one of the quickest and easiest ways to kind of fly around and move around in your viewport. Now the next thing I want to talk about, if we bring this back open again, after we've covered all of those things, is our game view. The game view, in this case, is hidden behind the scene view. These are little tabs that we can move. Now you can always rip off any of these tabs and put them anywhere you want, but for now we're going to leave it hidden on this side. Now if I do click the camera, which right now is the only camera in the scene, as we can see over here, we will get a preview of the game view because it is the main camera. So if I was to switch over to game view, we'll see this is the same view. If I grab the camera and rotate it, and here is our move, our rotation, and our scale features, but if I go and grab the rotational tool here and rotate, you can see that it will change the camera uh, and the view, the little preview that we get, and of course it does change the game view. So I'm going to undo that change there. Okay, and that's basically what, uh, what we need to know about the game view itself for now. But whenever you load up the game and actually play, that's the view you play from. But we'll get more, we'll get more into that later. Now, the next thing that I want to talk about is our hierarchy. Okay, now the hierarchy is this over here, which is basically a list of all of the objects within our scene. Right now we only have two, which is our main camera and our directional light. Um, you can easily rename objects by slowly double-clicking them or by right-clicking and hitting rename, and we can just call it whatever we want. Now I'm not going to change that, but that's your options there. Okay, now if you want to, let's just say our camera's moved off the side and we want to center an object, we can just double-click on an object in here and it will center it. Another way to do it is if your object is selected, if you hit the F key, which is, whoops, if we hit the F key here, uh, that is your frame button, and it will do the exact same thing as if we were to double click on an object here in our hierarchy. Okay, so last two things I want to talk about is our inspector and our project folder. Now, first things first is inspector. So let's come over here. Whenever I select an object in the hierarchy, you'll notice that my inspector changes, which is this tab over here. These are all of the options that I have available to me whenever I have an object selected. So they will be dependent on the object. So the sliders, um, the, the functions, any of that kind of stuff that you want to add or uh, change will be all over here on the side. And they are, of course, dependent on what type of object you choose. Okay, so you can see there, if I have nothing chosen, then the inspector is blank.
Now the last uh, section that I want to cover is the project folder. And the project folder is basically what was created when we created the new project, right? So we chose the file location and it put it in there. If we choose, say, you can see these are the same folder. So here's our assets folder. If we actually imported none of those assets, this would be blank. It would just be an empty assets folder. But we do have these two folders that were imported. Now if I say expand editor here and we see cross platform, you can actually see that that is the same thing we'll see over here. So it kind of gives you a little bit of a preview. You can move this over so it's a little bit easier to see what this is saying. Uh, but this kind of gives you a little bit of preview. So if you have like actual models, geometry, textures, those things will load up over here and it's easier to tell uh, what they look like. But this is actually just a mirror version of what is on your computer. So if I am to right click on the assets folder and go show and explore, this will show me the exact same fi file structure on my computer. If I double click assets, Okay, we can see the editor and the standard assets in the same folders we can see here. If I right click and say add a new folder here, right, and we'll just leave it new folder, and I switch back over here, you'll notice that the new folder will also show up here. So like I said, it is literally a mirror. So this is the easiest way to import files, of course, is to just drop them into that file structure, go back into Unity, let them load them up, and then bam, you've got everything that you need uh, right there. So. There obviously is way more to learn uh, about Unity, but this was just a uh, quick introduction to the concepts of Unity and to its interface. Uh, hopefully you learned a lot, and I'll see you in the next one.